Can we take a couple of minutes this morning to uh, look at the uh, subject shortly? Hopefully there's time for others to share. So this morning we looked at the Lord and we looked at his love. We saw that in the remembrance of this morning, the remembrance of him this morning. Um, but I wonder if we could maybe just look at uh, another characteristic of the Lord, very important characteristic and certainly something that is um, the world is wanting for. Um, and that would be truth. So to build on some things, I know that uh, Ben has referenced this in the past, and uh, even his dad has referenced some of this too. So to build on it, put it together, hopefully something that uh, even for us who are a little bit older, um, and especially those for the younger ones to, to help um, understand some things as we get uh, confronted with some of the philosophies of the world. So um, let's start with a easy verse. Can somebody quote for me John 14, 6? Okay, I know somebody can. Okay, the answer to that question is yes. Sirach, could you read for me John 14, 6? Thank you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Okay, thank you. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. So the key here, obviously, being the second statement that he makes. He first says, I am the way. Certainly something we can look at. And then he says, I am the truth. Okay. A um, couple of points of note. Did he? There's um, articles in English. I don't know how this translates into other languages like America or Arabic or whatnot, but I understand the English concepts. They're called articles. You have A and you have the, right? Articles are what those are called. A is an indefinite article. Indefinite. It means anything. You say there's a car in the parking lot. Which car am I talking about? Don't know. There's a car in the parking lot. If I say the car, I have defined. It is a definite. It's a definite article. A is indefinite. The is definite. Does Jesus say he is a truth? He says, I am the truth. I am the truth, not a truth, the truth. What's one thing that we hear today often? Often. Well, I have my truth and you have yours. Okay. I have my truth and you have yours. That is a concept of relativism. That's relativistic. There's no absolute stance there. There's nothing that's a car. Right? It's an indefinite concept. Jesus here doesn't say, well, I have my truth and you have yours. He says, I am the truth. It's definitive. So it's interesting that's in John, because we also see in John something that a Roman who should have known better had a little problem with this whole thing. So let's look at Pilate in John Lost the reference. Sorry. Give me a second. 1838. Thank you. I was looking right at it. Thank you, Ben. Thanks. Thank you, Ben. All right. So in John 1838. So um, I'll read it and then we'll put it in some context. Well, I'll just put it in some context first. So, so Jesus is brought before Pilate, right? Jesus is brought before Pilate. This is right before his crucifixion. He's being brought before Pilate. He's already been uh, tried, we could say, by the uh, Jewish leaders of the day, the Sanhedrin, right? Um, he, so he's already been tried in that sphere and arena, but they didn't have the authority to do anything with him without the Romans' consent. So they had to pass him up to Pilate. So he's passed up to Pilate, and we have some interactions between Jesus and Pilate. And ultimately, uh, probably for good context, we can read verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, are you a king then? And Jesus says, you said that I am a king. 
To this end, I was born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. And Pilate then says, what is truth? What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said, I find in him no fault at all. So Jesus says, he starts speaking about the truth and Pilate, who should have known better. And I think Ben gave a nice little uh, explanation of this a couple of years ago. Um, Pilate says, what is truth? Okay. Here's, here's, here's the interesting part, right? Here's the part. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Pilate is literally in the face of truth incarnate. Truth incarnate in the form of a man. Standing right in front of him. And he says, what is truth? It's right in front of him. And he doesn't even know what it is. Or he was denying it either way. Um, so Jesus is the truth. We see here the problem then that Pilate has with this. And then let's go back to, but let's answer that question. Okay, let's answer that question. What is truth? What is truth? I'd like to give a definition to that and say truth is what is. What is. Not my perception of what is. Not my recollection of what happened. Right? Not my recounting of what I saw. Right? Because you could... Uh, you know, a police will interview witnesses at a traffic accident, right? Or, or something that happened and everybody will say something different, right? Even if they're trying to accurately re, you know, recollect what happened, everybody will say something different, right? So are they all speaking the truth of what happened? No, they're not purposely lying maybe, but they're not saying exactly what happened because they all have their different spin on things. They're all different flavors. But I would suggest the truth is what is. What is, and the reason I use that verbiage interesting is because now that's going to come back to a very interesting account with Moses to tie this back together. So if we go to Exodus, so we go to Exodus. So the children of Israel are in captive captivity in Egypt and they're in bondage in Egypt. And ultimately, God is raising up a deliverer, someone very characteristic of the Lord. There's lots of characteristics between Moses and the Lord that we see that are very similar. Moses can very well often be a type of the Lord, right, um, in many ways. And I think um, it was your grandfather who first pointed out the um, interesting point that uh, um, all the babies up to two years old or so were to be killed by Pharaoh because the Satan got the sense that something miraculous was happening, something significant was happening with Moses. He thought that was the deliverer. It's the same thing that happens later uh, that Herod has the, uh, the babies killed when Jesus is born, right? Satan's working in the world. He thought something was significant with Moses. And it was, it wasn't what he thought it was, but nonetheless, it was, there's, there's similar characteristics between Moses and the Lord because the actions that the world took against trying to kill Moses when he was a baby are the same actions that the, the world took against the Lord, right? Appreciate your grandfather sharing that way back when. Um, nonetheless, Moses now is, he's raised up and he's, uh, he's been trained in the court of Pharaoh. Uh, he's gone off into the wilderness and ultimately the Lord is calling him. The Lord calls him out of a burning bush, right? So here's where I, I, I'd like to put the pieces together. He calls him out of a burning bush. So let's uh, read Exodus 3 verse 10. Come now, therefore, I will send you unto Pharaoh, that you might, may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I would go unto Pharaoh, and that I would bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with you, and this will be a token that I have sent with you, when you have brought forth the children of Israel, the children of Israel, the people out of Egypt, you will serve God unto this mountain. And then verse 13 and 14. And Moses said unto God, behold, 
when I come to the children of Israel and say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What will I say unto them? And God told Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus will you say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. It kind of weird, reads weird in English, doesn't it? It's a little weird. Got to admit, I am sent me unto you. It doesn't, little, reads a little weird. I don't know if that reads cleanly in other languages, more simply. I don't know. But nonetheless, let's explain it in English because I, I, it is horrendously important and paramount truth. What are the three names for God in the Bible? What are the three names for God in the Bible? And not compound names. There's three root names. We have Elohim. We have Adonai. And we have Yahweh or Jehovah. Elohim, Adonai, Yahweh or Jehovah. And we have all the other names that are conjunctions of that. El Shaddai and things like this, right? So Elohim is... A generic name for God. In English, we would say lowercase g-o-d. Okay? So Christians have a God that they worship. It's true. There's more to it than that. I'd say there's more definitive nature to that, but it is a truth. We have a God that we worship, right? And it is true that the Hindus have gods that they worship. That is a truth, right? They do. G-o-d. It's a, it's a um, deity, Right? A spiritual being, a deity, G-O-D, God, Elohim. That's what that word means. Adonai is a word, Lord, Lord. So it's, it's that word, like if you watch all those English Britcoms and stuff, they say, my Lord, and stuff like that. It's a term of reverence. It's a term of reverence to elevate someone, which is why um, we like to say Lord Jesus. He's not just Jesus. He's Lord Jesus. He has preeminent, he has prominence and pre preeminence. And then we have the word Yahweh or Jehovah, which is the interesting one. And in fact, that's the word that's used here. In fact, Elohim and Yahweh are both used here. So let's, let's reread this again in the English, and then we'll reread it, understanding what it's actually saying, looking at the names of God. Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, what shall I say unto them? Sorry. And I say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you. Then they're going to say to me, what is his name? What should I tell them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am has sent you. Thus will you say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Okay, that's what we say. That's what we read here. Now let's look at it with the understanding of what the names of God that are actually used here are and what he's saying. So Moses says unto God, I'm going to go to the children of Israel and I'm going to say unto them that the God of your fathers has sent me. The Elohim of your fathers has sent me. The little lowercase G-O-D of your fathers has sent me. Well, the Hindus have their gods, right? And here, the Egyptians had many gods, right? They had Ra and all these other gods, right? So the God of your fathers has sent me. So now we have this plane of gods. You know, the Egyptians have these and the Israelites, well, the God of your fathers has sent me. The Egyptians have the gods of their fathers and the, uh, the Israelites have the God of their fathers. Okay, so I'm going to go to the children of Israel and I'm going to say that the God of your fathers has sent me. Okay, and the children of Israel are going to be a little bit shrewd. They're going to say, well, what's his name? Is it Ra? It's the sun god, and I don't know all the other Egyptian gods. I'm sure somebody knows all that stuff. But they're going to say, is it Ra? Is it this? Is it that? Is it whatever this? They probably knew all the, the 20, 30 gods. Who knows how many that they were that the Egyptians had? Certainly the Israelites knew who these things were because they were in that land. They're going to say, well, what is the god of our father's name? So that's the key here. Everybody has their own god, right? Everybody had their own god. And in fact, here, what we're getting at is everybody has their own truth here in this relativistic sense, right? The Egyptians have their own gods. They have their own truths. That's what we're going to see here in a second. And Moses is coming to say, well, Israelites, your God has told me to lead you out of Egypt. And they're going to say, okay, well, they have their truths. And 
what's the name of our truth? What's the name of our God? Okay. And so God then says to Moses, Jehovah. He literally says, Jehovah. I don't know if that's exactly how it translates out of the Hebrew, but that is what he's saying here. He's saying, my name is Jehovah. Tell them that Jehovah has sent you. So don't tell them Ra sent you, right? Don't tell them that an Elohim or just any God sent you. Tell them Jehovah sent you. Okay, so what's the significance of Jehovah? We translate that as I am that I am. Okay, what is the significance of Jehovah? Jehovah means the uncaused cause, the self-existing one. Okay, causality says that if you drive down the street and put on your brakes, you'll stop, right? Because you put on the brakes, you will stop. Causality says whatever happens, something caused that to happen. So if something caused, you know, uh, two people to meet and then Ryan to be born and everything, right? So something caused them to meet and then something caused that party to have happened where they met at, these kind of things, right? There's causality that leads to everything that's happened. Jehovah means the uncaused cause because everything can be traced back to a cause, right? And ultimately we see the, the initial cause right here of, you know, the world where God spoke and the world came into creation, right? So that's the cause of the world, right? We can trace everything back to that. God spoke. Okay. So what was the cause of the world? God, what was the cause of God? Nothing. Jehovah, the uncaused cause. That's the significant. We have to, ourselves and our humanity, we have to attribute our cause to something outside of ourselves. We have to, because that's what happened. God inherently is the cause of everything, and he doesn't attribute his existence to anything outside of his self. There's no external existence that caused God. I am that I am. Jehovah, the uncaused cause. So what he's saying here is tell them Jehovah sent you. And this is actually apparently in, uh, for the ancient Israelites, a very revered name, so much so that you didn't even write it down. That's how revered the name was. So what he's saying here is I am that I am sent you, right? I am that I am. What is that very similar to when I said, what is the definition of truth? What could you say is the definition of truth? What is, right? And here I am am. That's the same word. Uh, what is I am? That's the same linguistic concept there. So what we're seeing here is God saying, I am the uncaused cause. I am supreme over all. He is. He is truth, right? He is exactly the answer to Pilate's question. And obviously the father and the son are one. So when the son is standing before Pilate, the answer to that question of truth is standing right in front of him. So we see this all the way back in Moses. We see this um, in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We see the questions that Pilate asked about truth. We see Jesus calling out what truth is and the fact that it's right in front of him. So now here's the key. The world is going to try to tell us that they all have their own truths. We said that at the beginning, everybody has their own truth. You have your truth. I have my truth. We just just the way things are. And it's not. It's not. That is a lie. It is a lie. Now, it's not necessarily for us to uh, beat someone over the head and say that you that is a lie, that is a lie. It's, but as far as what we understand for ourselves, and we hope that they may come to understand, but as far as what we understand for ourselves is that there is a truth, a singular truth, the truth, Jesus god right that's what we see here that is the answer for all these questions of the world because as long as we try to have subjectivity we say this is right that is well this makes me feel good but this is okay all these things are problems that the world is creating to justify their own things because they want to just like Pilate, have truth right in front of them and still say well what's truth they want to ignore the truth that is right in front of them so anyway leave us with that for now hopefully there's time for others